Hello and welcome, my name is Meeples, they, she, he, and this is Literally Graphic. And today I'm going to be talking about the comic anthology Menopause, a comic treatment edited by M.K. Zurich, published by Pennsylvania State University Press, Graphic Medicine in 2020. Content notes for some entries link menopause with the social construct of womanhood, uh, nudity, and some discussion of fertility. If you don't recognize the name N.K. Zurich, comics nurse, you should go back and check out my review of their comic Taking Turns that I reviewed back in January. She is involved in a lot of things in the graphic medicine movement, so I'm entirely not surprised that she was the editor for this anthology. Stories included were written by M.K. Zurich, Linda Berry, Maureen Burdock, Jennifer Camper, Casey Counselor, Leslie Ewing, Joyce Farmer, Ellen Forney, author slash artist behind Rock Steady Brilliant Advice for My Bipolar Life, which I reviewed in 2018, Ann M. Fox, Keat Ganiza, Roberta Gregory, Tiva Harrison, Rachel House, Leah Jones, Monica Lalanda, Kathy Leamy, Ajuan Mons, Jessica Morin, Mimi Pond, Sharon Rosenzweig, Joyce Shasher, Shasher, Susan M. Squire, Emily Steinberg, Dr. Nicola Streeton, A.K. Summers, Kimiko Tobimatsu, Carol Tyler, Sheely Wall, and Dane Walroth. What kinds of keywords came to mind when I read this anthology? Uterus, playful, aging, personal, doctors, adaption, and defiance. The official synopsis is, quote, like so many other issues surrounding women's reproductive health, menopause has been treated as a cultural taboo on the rare occasions that menopause and perimenopausal women are depicted in pop culture. They are stereotypically cast as the butt of demeaning jokes that encourage us to laugh at their deteriorating bodies and emotional volatility. The result is that women facing menopause often feel isolated and ashamed. In a spirit of community and support, this collection of comics presents a different view of menopause that enables those experiencing it to be seen and to feel empowered. Balancing levity with sincerity, these comics unapologetically depict menopause and all its attendant symptoms with hot flashes and vaginal dryness to forgetfulness, social stigma, anxiety, and shame. Created from a variety of perspectives, they represent a range of life experiences, ages, gender identities, ethnicities, and health conditions. The common thread uniting these stories is the affirmation that while we can and should laugh at ourselves, no one should be ashamed of menopause. The comics in this book encourage us to share our experiences and to support one another and ourselves through self-care and community. Featuring work by a host of pioneering and up-and-coming comics artists, menopause is a perfect foil to the simplistic cheap joke approach society at large has taken to this much derided women's health issue. Readers will revel in the sly humor and universal truths found here." End quote. As an anthology, it is hard to comment on the writing and art as it does change a lot throughout. I can appreciate the diversity of perspectives that are coming to bear on the issue of menopause, and it was edifying to see this topic addressed in a very classically indie comic way. Looking at some other reviews, some people seem to have been a bit thrown off by how little menopause facts are highlighted, definitely more personal narratives, many other issues of aging and or illness are interwoven, so also not highly focused. A great way to commiserate if you share any of these challenges. Art-wise, largely black and white. Some entries are in color. I liked how expressive the art was. It really helped with differentiating the stories as they aren't very strongly divided otherwise. Digging into the representation th side of things, the biggest question I had going into this anthology is how it would treat gender. Because there are some people who would hypothesize that women are the only people who can go through menopause when not all women do, and men and non-binary people can also have or have had wombs, periods, and go through menopause. Living in a large city, I do see a lot of language changing around the medical care of people born with wombs, but it's not universal and hatred of the trans community is certainly only becoming more popular. 
On the pro side, this collection includes the work of one transgender creator, namely Casey Counselor, plus of the women represented, there is a fair amount of diversity in how they present their gender, so anything but one note. On the negative side, the opening story really leans into the woman, triple goddess, life-giving blood, moon blood, and witchcraft side of things, which I know rubs more than just me the wrong way. Plus, you had the description that I just read that definitely linked women with menopause. Although, as I said in the content notes section, this level of menopause equals women's experience did vary in the entries themselves. There's also an entry from A.K. Summers, who also wrote Pregnant Butch, which I read very hopefully, but was ultimately disappointed by the entirely uncalled for rant about how many, quote, chemicals trans men are supposedly putting in their bodies. That deco did not turn up if she still holds such opinions or if she has become more or less transphobic. Not having run into most of these creators before, I did not turn up any information on most of these authors and their perspective on gender, although a few have contributed to other queer trans inclusive collections, and Linda Berry appears to have done some workshops specifically for the trans community. Sexuality wise, we do see some diversity across the hetero to queer spectrum. We also saw a bit of racial diversity. Class was largely ignored as far as I can remember, but disability did pop up from time to time. I was glad to see an entry from Kimiko Tomatsu. I haven't read Kimiko Does Cancer yet, but it is very high on my TBR. Seeing representation of what she calls surgical menopause is also really needed. Final thought, three out of five stars. I hope this is only the start of a larger discussion about menopause. Bye y'all, keep reading and organize the anti-capitalist oppression. And as always, Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.